Here we're going to be looking at something that happens in the cervix that's related to what we talked about in class. Uh, namely, that's uh, carcinoma. However, this is going to be a little bit different because we're going to talk about HPV-induced adenocarcinoma. So you guys know uh, all about the squamous dysplasia that can happen in the cervix. Well, HPV-16 and 18 also can infect the glandular cells. And so what you see here is actually a normal uh, gland, at least half of it is. So if you look at the part on the left, this is normal endocervical uh, glandular type mucosa and you can see that there's a lot of this ample pale blue cytoplasm. You have basally oriented nuclei. They kind of line up along this pink basement membrane and they look like they're behaving themselves. Now as you move to the right you can actually see that the nuclei begin to stratify and you also see that there is an increase in mitotic activity as we move around. So right next door to this you can actually see uh, what we would call adenocarcinoma in situ. And so here we see that the nuclei are stacked up on top of each other. In other words, they're stratified. You have mitotic figures. Uh, and you also have apoptotic debris. And so apoptotic debris is an indicator that there's a high level of cell turnover here. So this is actually neoplastic glandular epithelium. It's not yet invaded, at least in this focus, uh, but it is an adenocarcinoma in situ. And this is associated with HPV infection. And so this is a section of cervix and you'll notice that this is a rather large section of cervix because this is a cold knife conization specimen which is where they go in with a scalpel and cut out a large piece of cervix in, other, in order to get around a tumor such as this. And as we look around you can see that there is definitely a lot of glandular proliferation which is exactly what we would see in an adenocarcinoma and it is composed of those malignant appearing glands and you can see that they also go deep into the stroma and form these small nests. So this would be, this would be an invasive endocervical adenocarcinoma of the cervix and this is likely associated with uh, HPV 16 or 18. Interestingly enough if we go up to the surface uh, we do have a great example of a high-grade squamous intraepithelial lesion as well, which is not surprising given what you guys know about uh, HPV infection. So here you can see that there is full thickness replacement of the epithelium with these basaloid cells, that there are a lot of mitotic figures scattered around, uh, and this is intimately associated with the underlying adenocarcinoma. And so you can see this is an in, a gland involved with endocervical uh, glandular adenocarcinoma in situ. So we actually see these two uh, neoplasias together in around 10 to 20 percent of cases. Uh, I think the number actually is probably a little bit lower than that, but it's not an uncommon finding to find high grade in association with a adenocarcinoma in situ and you can actually see areas where the squamous dysplasia is replacing the lining of the endocervical glands. So in summary this is a uh, endocervical adenocarcinoma with a component of a high-grade squamous intraepithelial lesion and this entire tumor, uh, both parts, is caused by high-risk HPV infection.